Hello everybody, my name is Andreas Jäger. I work for Suse as a product manager. I'm responsible as part of my product management. One of my areas that I'm working on is um, the build story. So that includes build service and Suse Studio. And I want to talk a little bit about building. Um, and I should switch on that tool so that I can use it. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about building, not building of houses. We are a software conference here. We're talking about software. So you all know, you, you might have seen how to build a house, but we are talking more about how to build images, how to build um, packages, and what you can do for those. I don't, do you think you need to, to do the mic? Okay. Move it up a little bit. Okay. And that's those. Welcome. Thanks, Alex, for coming. Take a seat. Okay, build story. What am I talking about today? I'm talking here about use cases for images and packages. Um, what requirements you have, why, why, why to use them, um, how to do it. We'll also cover a little bit deployment um, and tools for that, and in general about Im talk about imaging. But let's look at a couple of image of use cases for imaging. So you might have heard about golden images. You might use them in your data center uh, um, to roll out new services. Stuff is a golden image, and part of the build story is how to create those golden images. Um, if you're talking about cloud, using a private or public cloud, you're not putting, starting from an ISO image and doing installation. You start with a so-called cloud image, with an image that is ready to, ready to run. You need to build that one. But also images for container workloads, which I will not cover, but just for completeness. Um, those are also images that need building. So let's look at some of the use cases. A colleague of mine called, called Rudy to, told me that story here. As a Zuse engineering department uses images, for example, for virtualization hosts. And he has 12 machines that are exactly the same. So he decided, instead of doing a manual installation on each of them, um, to build an image specifically for, for those 12, have it the same image everywhere, customize it for the workload, which is the same on all 12 of them, because it's a virtualization host, and um, then deployment to the images to the machines with, with the images is very fast and only needs very minimal interaction what needs to be done. So that's physical deployment. Um, and after, after the deployment of the machines, you change the host name, do the network setup, and are done. And if one of those 12 machines goes, goes down, it is, 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 is out of order, you can replace it and have it up in a very fast time because you have a pre-built image that is customized exactly for the environment, that's for the workloads you need to run on that one. And you can also update that image anytime that you don't need to do package updates um, when you install. That helps him and, and his team on setting up su such <coughs> machines. If you're in a public cloud um, running workloads as an OpenStack or Amazon or Google or whatever, Azure, um, you also have to build some images. You can take the, the pre-built images that we have in the clouds or you can customize your own. Um, those might be cloud-specific cloud because they need specific hardware drivers um, and so on. And they need different formats depending on the cloud, but you want to build them, and you want to build them the same perhaps over several clouds. Um, and here you have two options. Either go with a generic image for all the different workloads you have, or like with the virtualization host where you said, I create specific images for, all, for, for each and every workload that I have because I'm reusing it often and I need to build it very often. And um, you can update it as often as you want, or say I'm updating it only with each major operating system update and then do a um, super update or at, at the beginning to get the most um, current packages and be up to date. And then you want to put those images into a cloud image store, um, whether it's OpenStack Glance or an image store on one of the public clouds. A specific use case in that card is, is OpenStack CI, and if you want to learn more about that, I have a presentation in two hours to talk about the most insane CI infrastructure. Um, 
and explain how OpenStack is built. But one, one part of what, what OpenStack is doing as part of the testing infrastructure is that every morning, um, every morning European time, um, so that it's finished once once US wakes up, images are built that contain all the information for the jobs. So it contains, a, um, since Open, OpenStack has thousand, over 1,500 Git repositories, all that, that content is there, plus all the packages that the test jobs need to run on them are put onto the image. It's a huge image with, I think, currently six gigabytes of, of data, but it can start very fast and it doesn't need network for, for, for start, it does need very little network when, when starting up and running the tests. Um, so it contains all the information pre-cached that is possible uh, um, to, to, to put on that and only little interaction is needed to get the jobs running. And this is very important because OpenStack is testing 10,000 of tests every day and those 10,000 of tests that are done always use a new virtual machine. So it might be a virtual machine that has started, um, runs a test for 10 seconds and then gets, gets destroyed again. Um, or it runs it longer test for one and a half hours and then gets destroyed again. So you want to very fast updates, update those, have multiple of those running because a change that you commit might have made multiple changes and so on. And so those images are rebuilt every day. They're pushed to the clouds that are used by OpenStack testing. Um, and it's a fully automatic process for that one. Let's consider that a DevOps use case, um, continuous integration, continuous development use case um, on how you could, could do that if you, if you want. Um, a Docker image is it's a, a similar setup. You might want to have Docker images for, for a service that should be always um, up to date, should, should include your source code, your application to run on, but also should contain um, the operating system parts, the C library, the OpenSSL library, what, whatever is needed to run your application, your workload, um, always up, up there, up to date and rebuild that image, and once it's rebuilt, um, and, and anything new is there, you deploy it again to your cont container host and, and update your workload. Instead of, so, so, so away the other one, instead of doing an in-place update. And for those kind of workloads, it's important that you update regularly to be protected against any security problems and update it. So that brings me to a cycle about the DevOps setup, um, where, where is, building of images can come in, and those are options. You, you have to define your own way, your own processes of, of working, and then figure out what, which of those options you choose and, and, and go there. If you have a virtual machine set up, you might have the developers and, and the code repository, submit something to the code repository, then build the application, um, bake it into an image, test it, release it, um, deploy it, and then operate a menu to it, it's the same image the whole, whole way around, or do it with, with a container. You might give, give the developer some, some, some image for, for, for development and, and the initial testing of that. Um, and depending on how you do it, either you update the complete image, the operating system as well as the application, or, or, or take, take the operating system as a frozen part and update that less often. There are different ways how you can do it, depending on your, your needs. So what is important for such a build story, for such an imaging build, what do you need to do? What do you want to do? If you're doing building a house, you start with some kind of, of, of blueprint, first with some sketching. This is how, how my house should look like from the outside. Then you have an architect that come up with some kind of, of drawing, and then you get, get, get workers to, to build and follow the blueprint and um, get, get material in there. This image and package building, it's similar. You start with a blueprint. You don't need workers. You have computers to do that. Um, but you have tools to do that work. And um, what is important for images, in my opinion, is that you can reproduce those builds. Um, with a blueprint, building a house gives the same blueprint to two, two different teams. It should build the same house. What, sometimes you have problems and quality problems, whatever. But in general, they should build the same house. And that's the same what, what you expect with an image. You have one description of how the image should look like, and it, independent how often you build it, you want to have the same one out. I'll explain further on in the next session slides more on that one. You want to do it fast, 
there's no need to test it. If, it, if it's part of a DevOps workflow, you want to deploy very fast, you want to get feedback whether the, te the code you have written um, passes all the tests. Um, so building of that, baking it into the image should be fast. Um, and you want to integrate it in your workflow. You want to integrate it into the development workflow, you want to integrate it in the tests, in the test phase and also in the deployment and do that in an automatic way. And also you want to work together on those. Um, and that's a nice thing if you have here um, a blueprint, some kind of code, you can use the infrastructure as code paradigm and, and share all of that, have descriptions on how to build that and have several people working on that and if some, some, per, if some person leaves, somebody else can take over and that helps also with documenting what you do. So, reproducible Retributable reproducibility is an important part of that, that aspect here. Um, for us initially with, with building of packages, um, but, but the same with building of images. Um, you want to build the same build twice to check that nobody else put something in there. You take a, you take a build from, 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 a, from a colleague, from a friend, and want to double check that, that those builds are the same, you can do that again. Um, you want to build again in the same way at a later time um, on another machine if your machine breaks or if you co um, or also as, as another user if you collaborate on that one. And all of that should give the same work results. And it's reproducible is also important for testing because if the automatic setup does some, some, some building of an image and you can't reproduce it in a local environment, you might have, you have different environments and the test results from one that don't, don't go over into the other one. So that's important to have. A problem with all of those buildings of, um, build, buildings of software and also reproducibility is, is the internet. There was a couple of months ago, I think a three, three line code snippet that was removed from one of the was JavaScript, JavaScript repositories. And it broke all of JavaScript, I think. No, not, nobody could, could, could download anything because it, it needed that library which was just removed. And you want to protect that against that in your development and deployment workflow. Um, but you have, you have tools that, that download. Either you in install packages, you run Maven that installs some Java packages from somewhere. You have Python or Ruby packages or Golang packages, um, applications, and they all can download from the internet some random packages, some random source code, which is good for fastly developing software and get all of that in, but it gives you the risk that you can't do a reproducible build or that somebody just um, takes a package down and that happens every other week in the OpenStack environment if it takes those packages down um, or changes them in such a way that, that some, something is wrong. So you need to take care of that and, and protect against that. If you're Development, your work depends on, on that. So you can use repositories, um, use proxies or mirrors that mirror the content and if something, something appears, um, gets, gets removed. You can do that in a managed way or in a, in a, in a, in a proxy way. For RPM, there's, there's SMT or the manager, but you can also create manually a mirror. Java has a couple of solutions for, for proxies like um, Nexus or Archiva or Artifactory. Um, those can be used in Python, it's, it's, it's Bandersnatch. And I think, I'm sure there are other tools that can be used, but it's just an explanation what you, what you can do to avoid that. And also if you're building heavily, like OpenStack does, it helps a lot if you have a mirror in your, um, in your network close to your tests, um, instead of going 10,000 times out and, and downloading stuff if needed. So speaking about reproducible building, building of pictures and images, um, if you're doing it with RPM packages, uh, they, are, they not, normally don't download anything from the internet. Um, you can build an RPM package and use that and deliver it and have it for others to reuse that. Um, on an image, you can also build everything from local con content, both from packages and source code, and take care that you have everything as in a mirror, in a, we have via proxy of a local repository. And it basically boils down to download everything, all the source code that you need prior to building, and then do the build and archive what, what, what you did, what you downloaded. 
It's also important that you have a build environment that is separate from the running machine because you want to reproduce and build it. And it was on the other machine, you don't want to tell a worker you have to install ABC and change those three configurations. Some, somebody will screw up somehow. That's why we are, when we are doing building, we normally start a virtual machine or do it in a change route in such a way that it's completely isolated and this way also reproducible. Um, you don't want to hunt down those kind of bugs. Um, also, what's important is automate as much as possible. No, there shouldn't be any manual steps in there for, for building a package or, or, or an image. You want to invoke it and then that goes so and at the end you get a package to get an image and don't do anything. Every manual step is something that you can't reproduce and that might break and screw up. It's also nice if you store the build instructions, the blueprints and the source code together. So you have one unity, one, one, one single entity that you can move around and, and share it, that you can archive it, can version it. And the build instructions to have them automatic, um, they need to be machine executable. That can be an, a spec file, it can be a Kiwi file, I come to that one. So for building images, building packages, um, you can go with, if you're in an RPM world, um, build RPM packages, use them. RPM build is, is one way of doing it, but that is not, and it, that touches your system, um, and the open, open, open build service client can, can, can do the building in such a way that it touches your system, but it's separate from it, um, so that you can, can reproduce it. Um, or you can use a service like the open build service that allows you to, to build on a remote host for you. And I go talk more about the open build service. By the way, if there are any questions, feel free to ask. Yeah? Cool. <laughs> oh, how, how can we help you with that? <laughs> With, with, with OBS, I think, and I don't correct me if I'm wrong here, but by default it's, it's all version and you can put that, that together and, and upload you it there. Like write your comment of, about your build in your RPM? So you, have, you, have, file you, have, you have your spec file that, that can contain um, comments and um, all the build instructions and, and that one is version so you can also go back and, and look at the build from yesterday and see what, what changed in between. Yesterday it worked, it doesn't work anymore today, so what was changed. All the source code plus the, um, plus the build instructions are versioned that way. Right. So no, you're not recommending like external documentation, but using the tools themselves to document like the changes. I, 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 I would say so, but best talk with Bazarian. He is our build service expert, and he is at the, at the ARM kiosk in over there um, on specifics on that one. Okay, um, let's move on. Building images, what can you do? There are various tools for building images. On the container world, the Docker tool allows you to build an image in a reproducible way, um, unless you, you, you have it copy in some files from your local file system, when you break that. So you have to review how, to, how you do that. Um, Kiwi is a tool that Zuse uses for building images. There are other tools out there for building images, um, like this image builder in the open stack world. And it's, Kiwi can build installable images, virtual images, um, live images. And then we have tools or services that, that use Kiwi for building. Um, so the studio mentioned before and, and, and the open build service. Both use Kiwi internally to, to build images. Um, so it's the same build instructions that, that are used in both cases and, and that can be used. Yeah? What version of k 
doesn't seem to be the one that actually heard that voice. It, with, with OpenSUSE or with, with OpenSUSE and, and SLES, um, we deliver the Kiwi version as part of the part of the distribution. So SLES, SLES 12 contains the Kiwi, and we build with that Kiwi the distribution itself. And this is the same with um, with OpenSUSE. So, still, so development happens. The same as Studio sometimes use a different version, okay. or, or instead of the version that is in part of the distribution because sometimes bugs are found and it's quicker to put another version in there instead of reusing that one. But for each, in studio, each contain, for each distribution you're building, um, you need to create a, a specific setup and that's so-called containment and that, that comes with, with the Kiwi version. Um, so, so the options for building images. Um, if you're building with, with Kiwi, it's a supported option as part of SUSE Linux Enterprise Server 12. And it's an XML configuration with many, many options and many ways of, of doing it, of, of write, writing up. Um, if you don't want to start from, from scratch writing one, you can take the juice Kiwi file or export from, from Studio and use that one and, and build on top of that or click together in Studio a, a file that contains as, as much as you want and, and, and go from there. And that may not, not depend on the external service if you want and use it internally and, and hook it into your, your build infrastructure if you want. So with SUSE Studio, um, that's the easiest way to start with, with image building. It's um, a really great web UI around SUSE Studio um, and allows anybody to access that via, via the web UI, even from a Windows machine, even from a, um, from a smartphone whatever, to, to, to build an image. <coughs> Excuse me. So, SUSE Studio gives, gives you the option to, to build once, deploy everywhere, because it also has different, different output formats and um, can be integrated in that. You have the online version that is on SUSEstudio.com, that's also a product for installation if you want to run it on, on site. Speaking about Kiwi of, and building, you can also use our tool machinery, which is part of SLES 12 um, in the advanced systems management module that can inspect a system and generate from that inspection of a system an, a Kiwi file that will rebuild the same image. That helps you, for example, from, with moving a workload from physical to, to cloud or vice versa um, in, in different formats and generating a documentation of a setup that you have. Speaking about Images, the question is always what, what do I put on that one? And you have two, as I mentioned before, you have two different ways of putting image, of generating images. Either a generic image that you can use for all workloads or workload specific images. And it depends on what you're doing and, and how often you're doing stuff. As I said, Rudy um, decided to go for a complete ready to run image for his virtualization host. Um, OpenStack goes with a very generic image that contains everything for every, every kind of, of workload. It depends on very different requirements that, that you might have. Um, some advice, I would go with a complete image if it's, um, if you want to, to run the workload very fast with minimal setup and um, use it, it's the sa exact same workload is, is often um, deployed and boot up time is critical. If, on the other hand, um, you only want to maintain a, a few images, build a, build a base image um, that contains the, the common runtime, but perhaps not the workload, and then you can go on the other way and <coughs> oh, here's some water. Can, can go the other way around and um, customize at, at boot up for the workload, install the workload. That takes a little bit longer because you have to install all of that. Um, but it, it, it gives you flexibility to, to use it independent of workload. And it's useful if you have a large variety of different workloads or also short life workloads that are frequent configuration changes. You don't want to bake an image every five minutes, for example. And then you have to figure out how often do you want to rebuild the images. Do you do that if, if you do major updates or not? To customize an image, 
if you're in the cloud world, you can use cloud init, and that works in all of the public clouds, also in OpenStack cloud. Where at the boot time, the user passes some so-called user data to the cloud launch tool, so in OpenStack to the Horizon dash dashboard interface, you can give parameters on and, and, and give configuration information on that one. Basically, a, sh a complete shell script like, like you see here um, that groups, adds groups, and um, adds users to the system. And um, at boot time, the so called the, the image will then ask the metadata server for this data and configure the system depending on that one. What you can do with that is it's a complete, you can pass in, in any shell script, but the most common uses are setting up um, configuration management system, set up the host name, add users, add SSH keys, it's because cloud images normally don't have a password and don't come with an, with an SSH key baked in, in most cases, so you add, have to add that one and, and execute a, a few common scripts that can deploy your workload. So for the customization, if you do that via configuration management client, the CF engine, Puppet, um, Ansible, Solve, whatever, uh, can be used for those kind of workloads. And most of those are part of the SAS drive advanced systems management module and can be used. <coughs> so in, you install an agent on the image and um, configure the system at runtime and can personalize that with cloud init as well in this regard. You can also take, just decide not to build an image, but take somebody else's image. We have the juice for, for SLES 12 um, that can be used, and we have both the images and the KV files. So if you want to reuse the configuration but build yourself, you can do that, or you take our juice image that gets updated regularly. And with Docker images, we have SLES images that you can, can reuse, which we always update if there are <coughs> any updates and, and, and rebuilds them. Yep. Yeah. So the last uh, quite uh, quite uh, docker images for SLES uh, cloud and SLES Cloud. Uh, um, my question is, uh, can I uh, patch uh, these images? You, you can patch them uh, with, 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 with Super. You can patch them normally with, with, with Super. And there's also this uh, Super Docker command as part of SLES 12. Um, go, go to one of the container sessions and talk, learn about that. The super docker command allows to update uh, an image that you have downloaded and, and, and patch that with RPMs. So, it, so those container images contain the RPM database that you can use, in, can use super to, to update packages on that one. Install packages, update them. In this case, it's about your uh, basic images. Uh, for, uh, but even, even the basic image. Yeah. I, I, I would patch them in that case where, where, where the vendor is, is not coming in. If you have a security vulnerability, you might want to de deploy the shell stock no, new OpenSSL libraries directly instead of <coughs> in, 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 instead of wait, waiting for, for an image to appear. If they, so the images appear at the same time as, 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 as a package, you can choose what, what to do. It's, it's your choice on that one. Um, but it's, it's, it's an option to, up, to update there if, if not everything is there. But it's, it's more important if you add additional software on top of that that you update it. If you don't take, if for, the, for the base image, um, we regularly update it, but sometimes you might be too slow and you want to, to up, update something. So I mentioned Juice. What is Juice? Juice is a subset of SUSE Linux Enterprise Server that is designed for cloud deployments and for minimized physical deployments. And it's, on the other hand, it contain, it inherits all the positive features of SLES. So including certifications, availability of packages, subscription and pricing, and also policies for maintenance support. You can install that directly. Instead of doing an installation, um, this just uh, package-based. You can use Juice as a private cloud image to run ready to run virtual images or as a, as a silver image which you use and, and enhance and go with that. 
for that download the QV file that we have and use it as a reference point and, and go from there. Okay, open build servers. I mentioned it several times, so all the questions, what is that, what I'm talking about? That's the core engine, how Zusa is building its distribution, how we are building since over 20, no, nearly two, over 20 years, um, the, our, our products, our, this, our, our, our products in different ways. And it basically starts from source code together with the build instruction, um, builds automatically a package from that one, and that can, can either go to an online repository that you can install the packages this way, or it goes to an image. Um, and that can be an ISO image. Like if you go with this less, you download the ISO image on the one hand and um, from our server, or you download the, the online updates um, from the repository. So basically a user submits source code to OBS, gets a product out of that. I'm omitting on purpose all the steps in between. There's a DevOps setup here with, with Q, QA and, and, and testing um, integrated into that, that only packages go out that have been tested. Um, there's a review step involved. All of that you can um, build into OBS, but I'm not going into those steps. I hope there are four more presentations about OBS, or was, that, was yours this morning the only one, Adrian? Okay. There might be another one to, to be tomorrow about details on that. So what can OBS create? It can create package repositories, and for us that means so add-on packages, that's like um, the Plant Systems Management Module, or the S SDK, but also um, entire distributions. Um, variation of packages, you might have a, you have a package here and want to change that, or only change a command line, add different compiler flags, you can do that, um, or build a con entire products. You can build in installable products, appliance, appliances, and we use it also for building a, um, maintenance updates. And this is not only SUSE and RPMs, it can build um, anything from the Red Hat family as well, um, Debian packages. Um, it can build um, images for, for Debian Live Build and Arch Linux packages. And so it allows you if you, are, um, if you have an open source project, if, if you have a, a commercial project, if you want to run any kind of software and want to run it on multiple distributions, more multiple environments, it allows you to build, to put all the package description together with the source code and build those various packages and get them delivered. Instead of doing it separately and have, have different scripts and different environments for, for each of those um, environment, um, distributions or build targets. It builds in a chain route or as part of your LX, LXC. It can build on, on Xen, on a, on a hypervisor in a virtual machine. Um, it builds for all the architectures that Zoom supports and also for fun, for, for a couple of toy projects that some engineers started with, where um, having a build service and automatic building of a complete distribution helped. So we had PRISC and MIPS and M68K um, there and an ARM architecture for, for sure. And even if you don't have the hardware in-house, you can build that, takes longer, um, and emulate the building. There are various ways for that. And we have different formats also for the repositories, how to deliver the packages that are supported this way. Open build service is used for sure by SOSE in, in different, at, at the heart of different um, offerings that we have. So as part of the open builds of, of open SUSE, we do that as part of SUSE Enterprise Server, as part of Package Hub, we all use the build service. Um, Intel, SGI, Cray, Dell are using build service to build, build, pack, build RPM packages or build complete distributions. There are some communities that do it, um, and we have some, some partners, some ISVs that, that build packages um, or drivers, add-ons needed for that one. If you want to use the build service, um, it's open source. You can download the software from our site. You can also go to build.opensource.org and use our instance, um, upload your software and build it um, and collaborate with others on it. Um, if you want to run your own instance um, locally and want to support, have support for that one, um, 
feel free to send me an email and I can bring you in contact with our consulting guys that will do such a custom setup for you. So what, what's the next steps here with Open Build Service? We're looking at two parts, um, things here with a closer integration with, with Studio on that one. Um, so one part is import content from, from Zuse Studio, so building, building an image um, in Zuse Studio and then importing the, the Kiwi file into OBS and rebuilding them together with the packages that you, that you do and have that closer together. But also have a graphical UI for, 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 for image, image building. So that, that means that we, so those very easy UI that you have in, OB, in Studio and that one is moving and migrating to OBS. Those are two areas we are working on. But image building is not the whole, whole step, especially if you talk microservices, if you're going um, with workloads, it's, not all, it, it's normally not a single, a single image or single workload. You have multiple image, multiple processes working, working together, and you have to think about also about orchestration. In the automatic deployment, so a usual example is of a web server that comes with some front end, with a database, um, with some API servers and, and so on, and you want to deploy that together. And it would be great if you can all have that together in a single project and, and work together, but then also deploy it together. And here orchestration comes in with OpenStack, it's heat. Um, on the container side, it's Kubernetes that can do it. And what, what's especially um, nice with Kubernetes is you, you can, it saves you a lot of that, that configuration set, set up where you just say, I'd like to have one database microservice, I'd like to have two replicas of the API servers and three of the, of the front end servers, and have a common network bound up, have my database access to it, and it would be great to have all of that together, but you can, can store that, that together and, and version it together, but the, there's no tool supported. Separate steps going forward. And I think that's the next step going from imaging, from a single image to multiple images, and take care of deployment. And um, that's the orchestration do to do the setup of, of your workloads. There are some related technologies that I have, have mentioned or in my presentation so far. So there's a public cloud model that contains tools for uploading images, um, for uploading to Google Cloud Engine, to Amazon, to Azure. We have, we have command line tools to upload an image that you build locally. We have the advanced systems management module that contains uh, configuration management software and machinery. And we have the containers module that contains Docker and its tools. If you want to learn more about what I talked here, I found those presentations here um, in the next days. So there's tomorrow at 10 o'clock software package, packaging with open build service. There's a presentation later today about images. I'm not sure what quicksand is. Let's figure that one out. And um, there's tomorrow also Kubernetes hands-on if you want to go in orchestration and also <coughs> on the op open stack side um, a presentation. In general, I think you've seen that there are many different ways that you can build and automate. I gave you a glance on, over, over that one, and now it's up to you to figure out how it best fits into your processes, and feel free to ask any of us here um, what options are there available, and then de deploy that and use such a process. Any questions? Nothing anymore? Okay, well, thanks a lot.